I started helping him do that. And within two months, he signed, I think it was a $200 million in, in deals. Welcome to the Business Ownership Podcast, brought to you by Awareness Strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, David. David, thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. So give everybody the highlight of who you are and what you do for business. So I am a business mindset and strategy coach. I've uh, been in business for 24 years. Um, the, my my start into this industry was through my own mistakes, really. It was a high school dropout at 17, just kind of raising myself on the streets of Chicago. Got married early. Uh, had two kids before I had the ability to live up to the responsibility. And I quickly found that out. But I had backed myself kind of into a corner because... Um, at the time, I don't necessarily see this now. And obviously the way that I got out of this, it had nothing to do with this. But at the time I was thinking the only way to change this is to go back to school. So for two years while I was, I was working on a dock, driving a forklift and on the weekends, I was driving a truck. I was basically working six and a half days a week. I would sit around every day, just trying to figure out how do I change that? How do I get out of this situation? Everybody I asked told me the same thing. See, we told you so you shouldn't have quit high school, Right. So my thought was, I have to find the money and the time to go back to school. Now, this is late 80s, early 90s. There's no internet at the time, right? So you'd have to go to a physical local college or something. And as I'm trying to figure this out, we wake up one morning, the car's repossessed. Uh, we can't afford our rent. We have to literally skip out on the rent in the middle of the night and move 60 miles away to a neighborhood we could afford, which was a terrible neighborhood. Um we ended up we ended up filing for bankruptcy, and we had to do that pro bono because wow. we didn't even have any money to hire an attorney. And I'm like, well, I need time and money to go back to school, but I don't have time and money. How do I solve this problem? So after about two years, and things just progressively getting worse, I just had a meltdown one night um, at work, and I just started sobbing in the back of this trailer, and I and I was basically begging God, please show me something, anything, I'll do anything. I've got to figure out a way to get out of this. I don't know how to get out. And immediately a voice in my head, I mean, it literally sounded like it was in the trailer, but it said, David, change your attitude. That's what I heard. I heard it immediately after I asked for help. And then I began to sit there and literally think, what does that mean? So long story short, I picked a guy, because I had been hearing this, by the way, just I need to throw this in there. When I was a kid, I was a terrible student in school and I was always getting in trouble. So they would bring my parents in and the teachers would say, hey, David's a pretty bright guy, but his attitude towards school just sucks. You need to you need to fix that. So their attempt to fix it was to ground me from one report card to another. Right. They took away all of my I mean, basically any freedom that I had, I would have to come home, go to my room and stay there. I could come out for dinner but I haven't was supposed to go back and study, but nobody showed me how to study. Nobody showed me how to pay attention. Nobody worked with me on any of these issues that I was having. So I went through oh, my whole, I mean, I just want to say right there, I just see this cute little tiger stuck in this cage going, but I don't know. I go back and forth. It's getting more and more yeah, frustrated. But that's pretty much the way that it was. It, it really was. So the, the, for this, this word attitude was not the first time that I heard it, but I really didn't know what it meant. I did not have a comprehensive idea of like, I mean, I understood the definition of the word, but I didn't know how to, how it meant as it pertained to my thinking and my behavior. So I said, okay, who do I know or who could I find that has a better attitude that is way ahead of where I am. And it just so happened, I worked for a company that was the largest food importer in the United States at the time. And the story behind this guy's success was that he started in a garage in one of the Chicago suburbs, and he built this enormous company. And so the idea that he started in a garage made me kind of relate to him in some way, right? Like, okay, we're both starting in the same place. How did he get to this magnificent place. And I thought, well, number one, he must have loved what he was doing because I, every day I hated what I was doing and I would verbalize it and I would tell everybody how much I hated it and it sucked and that whole thing. And then I thought, okay, so there's that. 
he must have done a really good job in order to build it from his garage until this is huge multinational uh, corporation. And then there was something that really stood out to me that was very interesting. It was my first awareness of like having a conflicting belief system with what I was taught as a, as a child. We had one of the very first automated, almost fully automated warehouses. And the he would have all different kinds of other business owners and CEOs come and do tours of this place. And they're, of course, they're all in their suits and, you know, polished shoes and, you know, perfect hair and everything walking through. And about 85% of the people that worked in that warehouse didn't even speak English. But he would never walk past an employee without stopping putting his hand on their shoulders, saying, hello, how are you? How's your family? Anything I could do for you? Every time. And I watched him do this for two years. It wasn't just a one-off show type of a thing. This is who this guy was. And I thought, you know something that is so different than what I grew up hearing about successful people, because I heard that they were not good. They were dishonest. Most of them were crooks. They were keeping poor people poor. Like all of the negative stuff that even to this, even to this day, we matter of fact, we probably hear it even more today than we did back then. And I thought that's, I don't see evidence of that in this gentleman. I just don't. He seems to be the antithesis of this. So I changed three things when it came to my attitude. I'm going to act like I love what I do. I'm going to do every job to the best of my ability. And I'm going to treat everybody with total respect. Now, I was not really a disrespectful person, but I had gotten angry, bitter, and jaded, which had me treating people not respectfully. So I changed those three things. Now, when I changed them, I said, I'm going to do this for a year because there was another voice in my head that was trying to talk me out of it. It said, look, you've never stuck with anything in your life. What makes you think you're going to stick with this? This couldn't possibly make a difference. And I said, no, I'm going to, I, I don't know what else to do. Here's something to do. That voice was real in that trailer. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to give it a try. I, I was making 20000 a year the day that I started doing that, which was the following day when I got to work. 30 days later, I was making 62500 Now, I didn't even know anybody that was making 62500 back, back. I mean, this is the late 80s, early 90s, right? And I grew up in a suburb right, right, on, the, right on the outskirts of Chicago, and the median income was 20 grand. So I became super fascinated with how this change could happen so fast in my life. And People noticed this, and my family noticed this, friends noticed this, all kinds of people noticed it, and they all said the same thing. Man, you got super lucky. Don't screw this up like you've screwed everything else up. You know, that kind of that kind of language. And I thought, no, that's not what it is. I don't number one, I don't believe in luck. Um, but I don't know, but I do admit that I don't know what I did to change this. I don't understand how this could possibly have this significant of a change. So I started on a period of seven years of studying success, human potential, biographies of the greatest people in the world, going to seminars, getting a mentor. When I went to work for the company that paid me 62500 I went there delivering hazardous fuel, petroleum. And when I left there, I was in charge of expanding the company across the country. And I never went back to school. So then after I got this education, when I educated myself, I, became, I, I fell in love with the idea that Everybody has the ability to do this, but most people are just so unaware that they have the ability, they never even consider it as part of a reality in their life, that I wanted to start a business and dedicate my life to teaching people this for the rest of my life. And 24 years ago, I started that company, and that's what we've been doing for 24 years all around the world. So who would you say you serve and support now? Small business owners, mostly. Awesome. And Small business owners. We do corporations, we do people that don't have businesses, but primarily our ideal target market is, is the, the small independent business owner. Nice. And what's your favorite part of it? Watching them trans transform. <laughs> nice. Love it. So apparently we've got into the rapid fire section of the podcast. It's all good. Oh, uh, so give us an example of a Cinderella story of one of your clients. Uh, um so I'll, I'll tell you about one that really shifted my thinking in the most significant way. This this is this experience with this client was responsible for me going over a million dollars in my own income very early on when I started the company. 
I had a guy that came to me um, through a friend of a friend, and he was a builder, right? So uh, he would get big tracts of land in the United States, and they would put up malls and huge communities and all kinds of stuff. And he said to me that, you know, he was doing relatively well, but his current client at the time was the Chinese. They were coming in and buying enormous amounts of land and building on it. He said, but the problem is, is that something's breaking down in the sales process. I have no idea what's what's going on. Well, just so happened that I had experience working with people from Asia in the petroleum industry because of other businesses. And so I understood how they worked. It was just like... If there's any kind of luck, it was that. Like, how do you? How would you even know this? Because I wouldn't have known it. And I re and I knew that they were very particular about contracts, and how they how they negotiated contracts and signed contracts, and what they needed to know in order for them to feel trusting and to to see an opportunity and make it. And this guy didn't know this. So after having a conversation with him, I found out that I'm pretty sure that's where the breakdown was. So I. I started helping him do that. And within two months, he signed, I think it was a $200 million in, in deals. And I was charging $4,600 a year to coach at the time. <laughs> and I, and I stepped, I mean, it, it literally changed my perspective on everything because I thought to myself, What's your worth if you can actually help somebody, some, somebody solve a problem at this level? Okay. And that's where my coaching then went over to over six figures to, uh, to coach somebody, and which immediately took me over a million dollars. I mean, it was an, it was incredible. It was a huge quantum leap in what it was that I was doing. I also recognized another th uh, very important thing, and that is that I needed to really focus on. This is where I kind of determined that business people were going to be my main market um they had uh they had a they had a their own self interest they had a vested interest in actually learning growing changing they were very serious about it they had made the commitments they had sacrificed they had done all the things that were necessary to prove that they could handle the change going into it where i was running into a lot of people that that a lot of dreamers that wanted you know big results in their life but they weren't willing to do any of the work. So it took a little while to find that. But when this guy, the contrast was just so big, you couldn't ignore it. So I decided I was going after a different kind of uh, person at that point. Nice. I love it. So what does it look like when somebody's working with you? Describe the process. Well, it's a little bit different for everybody because it's not just one clear cut thing for each person. So the idea starts off with one very important question. What do you want? What do you want? And believe it or not, it's the biggest breakdown in human potential all over the world. People don't know what they want. And one of the main reasons that they don't know what they want is that they weren't given permission to want what they want as a kid. So if you grew up in a household, a community, a social environment, an educational environment where it was not okay for you to, to actually explore what you really desire in this lifetime, it's not that you just weren't given that, you were given the opposite of it, which meant that there was usually guilt and shame and you're not supposed to, and who do you think you are and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it. So the first thing is that a person has to literally be able to discover what it is that they want. And then we go from there. And it really depends on where they are in their journey and how they view their own self-worth, right? Because everybody wants something different. So to me, it doesn't matter what, what they actually want. What matters is that they know what they want and they're committed to that journey to actually get it. So I work with people individually based on, on where they are. So it's different with every person. I mean, they're buying coaching or they're buying a seminar or something like that, but how I work with them as an individual is different with every person. Awesome. So what are some of the stumbling blocks that somebody might be having and thinking, oh my God, David, I need you so badly right now? Uh, one of the first things is that they're struggling and they're stuck and they can't seem to get out of whatever they're, wherever they're stuck or wherever they're struggling. They, they're they repeating uh, same problem over and over again. They've tried numerous different things to get on the other side of the problem. They can't figure out how to get to the other side of the problem. That's usually the place people are when they come to me. Nice. 
Love it. So we all know stuck entrepreneurs, <laughs> they're out there and they're probably listening yeah. to us right now. So how do they start their journey with you, our listeners? Well, it depends. So a lot of people actually come there. I mean, it's, it's changed so much over the last 24 years. Um, we get a tremendous amount of people through our, our podcast, the successful mind podcast, uh, which is basically a small business and mindset podcast. And we've been doing that since 2017. It's got a, it's got a great following. It gets introduced. People spread it by, by word of mouth all the time. And we get a tremendous amount of people through that. But I would say that the, the, the most people that actually come to us come through somebody else that we've actually worked with or some industry that we've actually worked with. So when we help other people do really great in their business, it becomes very noticeable in the industries that they're in. And then those people want to know, what did you do? So when they tell them that they worked with me, we usually get an influx of people from that industry based on that kind of word of mouth advertising. So between that and the podcast, and then of course I speak all the time uh, to different organizations and, and folks all around the world, we get people from there also. Right. Well, you've been, we will of course have all of your links in the show notes. So peeps, you can scroll down and check out David's links. And of course, open them up in a new browser because we're not done yet. Uh, but you've been absolutely awesome. David, any last words for our peeps? So here's here's something that, I, that I'd like to try to, to get across. Whatever your dream is, whatever you want, it's 100% real, right? It's not... Um, it's not some pipe dream. It's very important to start to believe the fact that if you have a dream, if there's something that you seriously want, you also have the ability to do it. And that's something that most people don't realize, right? I, I personally believe that the purpose, we all have a purpose. All life has a purpose. Why we human beings would not have a purpose would be beyond me. But we're the only, we're the only form of life that I'm aware of that actually contradicts their purpose, that questions their own, their own power. Every other form of life does exactly what it's supposed to do, right? And life, all life is designed to be successful. So our internal guidance is our desire. If we can tap into our true desire, it will pull us into our purpose in our life. And you will never desire, truly desire something that you don't actually have the ability to do. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to develop it, but it's definitely something that you have the ability to do and one of the reasons why you're actually here. So when a person starts to think about that, I think it begins to you know, kind of have an effect that goes... That, it goes out into the future of their life because it starts to open up possibilities where they may not consciously think that they have those possibilities because most of the things that they hear in their life is that they can't do what they want, right? And that, you know, if you're raised uh, working class or middle class, almost all the values that you've been given are about preservation. It's not about expansion in your life. It's about how do I get through life without too many problems? And that's fine if a person wants to live that way. But what I noticed really quick about working with entrepreneurs when I first started was that the value systems were totally different um, as far as why they're here, what they're doing, how they actually view life. And they don't view mistakes as being bad. They don't view risk as being bad. They view everything as a lesson, something to be learned that will help them continue to expand their life. So it doesn't matter where a person is. If they get stuck, they need to revisit those ideas if they've if they've heard them before and if they've never heard them before, they need to give them some real consideration. Absolutely. So give us uh, your podcast link again, the name to your podcast and just- Sure, the, the Successful Mind Podcast. Nice. The Love Successful it. Mind Podcast. We're on all podcast platforms. Love it. David, you've been absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable your time is. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your friends. We'd love helping entrepreneurs grow. 
Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention, you do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap, they offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap.